Iced tea, Mr. Zookaboom? Take it away! It's not organic! Fruit juice-induced pesticide poisoning is running rampant. Rampant, I say! Ah! I'm bathed in bacteria! Iris, my emergency loofah brush! Your appointment is here, sir. Oh, make it quick. Your breathing sends out millions of bacteria. We're here to play our steampunk science song for you. It'll help reverse the decreasing interest in space exploration. And if you put it on your famous website, it'll go viral. And say we'll be ready to roll and rock before you can say, ah, ow, oh, ow. Don't need to be an Edison or have brains like Einstein. To learn what, what makes a light bulb work or study. Space and time. A little curiosity will take you to the stars. Where you can be an astronaut and do a dance on Mars. Steampunk science! Steampunk science! Steampunk science! Steampunk science! What? What? No! A satellite is falling out of orbit tonight! Wow! They look so cool when they hit the atmosphere, breaking up into burning balls of flame. Balls of flame that will reduce this city to a smoking crater. Get my jet, Iris. I want to leave before that satellite crashes down on me. We've got to get Mr. Zuckerboom to help spread the word about space exploration. Or we'll miss out on all kinds of cool astronomical discoveries like new planets and black holes. And how awesome I'll look in a space suit. Von Bolt, delay his departure while we figure something out. Yeah, I will do so with the perseverance of a passionate porcupine. And because of his weird fear of gravity, Mr. Zuckerboom's leaving town tonight. The more one understands something, the less they fear it. Mr. Edison's right. If we can give him the facts about gravity, he might relax and listen to our poem. Hi, guys. The... Hi, Rio. Ooh, portable eyeglass telescope, right? I'm using them tonight when that satellite falls from orbit. Rio, you're a wizard physics. We need a crash course in gravity. I know a good deal about gravity. It is a force of attraction or pull between two objects. The pull between two objects. So, like when the Earth pulls this bowling ball to the floor? <laughs> It's a good thing robots do not usually feel pain. Or I would be... How come these two beakers don't attract each other by gravity? Gravity is affected by the mass of objects and the distance between them. It's the atoms inside an object that make up its mass. Earth is so muito grande, really big, it pulls things to it. But most objects are so small, their pull isn't enough to make them move. Otherwise, everything would slam together. Timmy, don't forget to take out the trash. OK. Mom. Cannot wait to see the satellite come down. Adios, amigos. We need more info to handle Mr. Zuckerboom's fear of gravity. Not to mention mine. Next up, the virtual reality window. This place looks really alien. Greetings, Earthlings. I am Green E. And I am Green T. We, we are, are Green E.T. E I like initials, too. I'm JD. And I got a hunch you guys know something about gravity. How did you know? Dudes, you're floating. We need to know how gravity works. Can you help us? Yes, we can show you all about mass, distance, and orbits. First up, the Earth's moon. The less mass an object has, the weaker its gravitational pull. Less mass equals less gravity equals more fun. Yes. Now let's try a planet with more mass. Like Jupiter. The more mass an object has, 
The stronger its gravitational pull. More mass equals more gravity equals not so much fun. You bounce higher on the moon because its gravity is one-sixth that of Earth. So I weigh less on the moon? Yes. And no. Awesome! I've lost 70 pounds. On a scale, yes. Because the moon's gravity does not pull you down as hard. But your mass, that's the quantity of your atoms, has not changed. The more mass an object has, the greater its gravitational pull. So less mass means less pull. You said we also need to know about distance. How does that affect gravity? Excellent question. The closer two objects are, the greater their gravitational pull. Not to mention the splash of the cannonball. The further apart two objects are, the less their gravitational pull. Whoa! Now this is a high diving board! Ha! Ha! At this rate, I won't be making a big splash until next Tuesday. I'll check and see how Von Bolt is doing stalling Mr. Zuckerboom. <gasps> I've got no bars up here. You can phone home with mine. That satellite's going to crash down on my head any second! Oh! This is taking forever! I gotta get out of here! How's it going, Von Bolt? Ah, uh, Mr. Zuckerboom is more paranoid than an ant at an ant eater parade. Just don't let him out of your sight. Yeah, I will stick to him like a tenacious titanium tick. So, how do we convince Mr. Zuckerboom the satellite won't fall on his head? Just explain how gravity affects objects in orbit. An orbit is the path one object takes around another, like a spacecraft around the Earth. All of the planets in the solar system orbit the sun and are drawn to it by gravity. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How come all the planets don't just fall into the sun and burn up? There are two reasons planets do not fall into the sun. The same two reasons the moon and satellites don't just fall out of orbit. First, compared to the sun, the other planets are like grains of sand. Right! Their masses are less, so they're pulled less. The second reason is inertia. Sir Isaac Newton? Why is a great scientist like you here? Ah, I discovered that a moving object will keep on moving unless something else alters its course or stops it. Due to inertia, planets in orbit want to keep moving in a straight line away from the sun. But gravity pulls the planets back toward the sun. As long as these two forces stay in balance, the planets stay in orbit. Then I stay nauseous. By firing retro rockets, spacecraft reduce their inertia. So gravity can take over and it can be guided in for a safe landing. Satellite continues on course for re-entry. That's the satellite that Mr. Zuckerboom thinks is gonna fall on him. Not if the scientists have fired the satellite's rockets to balance the gravity and inertia and adjust its course. Ah, oh, which means they could guide the satellite down so it doesn't crash on Murphy's head or mine. Exactly. Thanks, ENT. This is where we get off. Driver, take me to the airport fast. Yeah. I shall go fast, but obey all the speed limits. Ah! Oh! Uh, so sorry. Let me dry that out for you. The satellite's falling! Drive, drive, drive! But first, a little relaxing music. Yeah? They say that whatever goes up, Cause gravity is the force that pulls together two objects. But bodies in motion tend to stay that way, so math nerds can calculate. 
When a satellite falls down from the sky, its trajectory and speed break. Which means there's no need for alarm or to fear it like the pox. Incredible! By understanding more about gravity, I'm not scared. Send me your poem! Got it! Now it's on my personal page and will go viral in minutes. <laughs> Interest in space exploration will go through the roof. <laughs> what? No! An earthquake at the South Pole? There's probably a 10 mile high ice tsunami full of rabid penguins headed this way right now. I'm out of here. Fear of polar ice tsunamis with rabid penguins? I wonder what that phobia is called. Polar tsunami, rabid penguin, and phobia? What else? Hey, Allie, do you want to see my new pet? I call it Kaflui. He's so cool! Where did you buy him? I didn't buy him, I made him. How? With this cool Thomas Edison Kaflui slime kit. First up, we need to make the guar gum solution. Yes, sir, Rob. We need to put our solution in the jar and leave it to set. Now we need to make our STB solution. I'm gonna give it a stir. Now we have everything we need to make Mr. Kaflui. Mr. Kaflui is starting to take shape. That is amazing. Why don't we use the magnet to play around with it? Look how it just sticks to it. Whoa. Look at it go. Do you think I should play as your cool mob, guys? Okay, let's see if this works. Ah, what is that? That was sick! Glow in the dark slime from the Kaflui slime kit. To get your Thomas Edison secret lab science kits, go to the Go Retailers nearest you. See you guys!